Hello, hello everyone. Kotongwane, the native god here. So today we'll be looking at a problem based on double epicyclic gear systems. And it reads as follows. A double epicyclic system is shown in figure 1.25. If the input shaft attached to gear A rotates at 500 revs per minute, find the speed of the output shaft and its direction. The analyst E is fixed. Right, so we're looking for the rotation frequency of the output shaft. Right, so we look at the output shaft and see which gear it is connected to. Right, the output shaft is connected to the analyst gear D. Right, so if you have or if you can get the rotational frequency of gear D, then we'll inadvertently have the rotational frequency of the output shaft. Right, now as he as mentioned, um, we have a double epicyclic gear system. Right, we have one that's on the side of the input shaft, and we have one that's on the side of the output shaft. Right, so remember, under condition one, we have to fix the arm. The arm in this case is lever arm L, and we have to rotate the analyst. Now, the question is you have two analysts, so which one do you choose to be the analyst uh, for condition one? Right, the answer to that is you look at the analyst that's on the side of the input shaft. So in this case, the analyst that's on the side of the input shaft is analyst gear E, right? So we're going to choose gear E as our analyst gear for our condition one, right? So condition one, fix the arm, and we are rotating gear E by one revolution in the clockwise direction, right? Now to get the rotational frequency of gear B, right? To get the rotational frequency of gear B, remember that to get B, B over the analyst is going to be equal to what? Number of teeth of the analyst. So number of teeth of the analyst. So gear E over number of teeth of B. Right? Now if you see here, the analyst gear E is what is meshing with gear B, right? It's meshing with the inside teeth. So whatever direction gear E is going, gear B is, go is going to be headed in the same direction, right? So meaning, because gear E is going clockwise, it means gear B is going clockwise. Now gear B is connected via a shaft with what? With gear C. So this is gear B. It is connected to what? To gear C through what? Through this shaft. Meaning what? Meaning both gears are going in the same direction and at the same rotational frequency. Right? That's why I have gear B and C under the same column. Because whatever rotational frequency gear B is running at is the same as um, for gear C. Right? So... The rotational frequency for gear B expressed in terms of number of teeth is equal to what? TE over TB, right? Now, I've already established that gear B is also going clockwise as it is meshing with the inside teeth of the analyst gear E, right? So this remains positive. The number of teeth for gear B remain positive, right? Now, number of teeth, gear E has 80 teeth gear b has 20 teeth so that's gear b gear c there's 24 teeth that's gear c gear a has 40 teeth and gear d has 84 teeth right now Going back to the rotational frequency for gear B, TE over TB is going to be equal to what? 80 over, over 20, right? So the rotational frequency for gear B is equivalent to what? It is equivalent to 4, right? Then we look at gear A, right? Looking at gear A, this is going to be TE over what? Over TA. 
Now, if you look at TA, TA is meshing with gear B, right? Gear B is going in a clockwise direction. So since they're meshing with the outside teeth, right? It means gear A will be going in the opposite direction. So if gear B is going clockwise, it means TA is going, or, or gear A is going anti-clockwise. So this will be negative. So this is 80 over TA is minus 40. And this becomes minus two, right? Now for gears D, right? For gear D, remember, we are looking for ND over the analyst gear, which we chose as a reference for our first condition. So NE, right? Now, gear D is meshing with gear C, right? So, ND, remember, between meshing gears, what do we have? We have a relationship between them. And the relationship between them is that they are both going at the same um, circumferential velocity, right? So, the circumferential velocity for gear D, which is ND, TD, is going to be equal to what? The one for gear C. So, NC... TC. So to get ND, you simply divide both sides by TD. Right, so ND is equal to what? NC, TC over TD. Right? And then NE. If you look at NE, NE meshes with what? With gear B. So that's the comfort velocity between those two gears is equal right so meaning you have n e t e is equal to n b t b right so to get n e you simply divide both sides by t e so that cancels and n e is equal to what N B T B over T E right now N D is equal to what N C T C over T D right then divided by N E N E being equal to N B T B over what over T E right now remember this is the same as being equal to N C T C over T D times T E over N B T B right now remember the rotational frequencies of gears B and C is the same so meaning this will cancel with that right and what do you have left in terms of number of teeth you have TC times TE over over TD times TB. So this will be TB times TD. So, so TD This is TD times T B, right? Now, in terms of direction, right? Remember, gear C is going in a clockwise direction, right? And it's because it's meshing with the inside teeth of the analyst gear D, it means gear D is also going in a clockwise direction, right? So this remains positive. So this is equal to TC is 24 times TE, which is 80 over TD, which is 84 times what? TB, which is 20. And if you punch that in your calculators, we are going to get 1, 1,143, right? 
so that's condition one done as far as condition two remember we multiply condition a right we multiply the first condition by x and then we add y so first condition for arm l is zero so we say x times zero which is zero then you add y that's why we have just y here right so we do the same thing with the other conditions under the first condition right so here you have x times one which is x then you add y so this will be four times x which is four x then you add y this is minus two times x which is minus two x then you add y and here you have one comma one four three times x right then you add y it's your second condition done right now for our third condition remember our third condition is going to be based on information we can get from the statements and the question right so from the statements um they say if the input shaft attached to gear a rotates at 500 drivers per minute so gear a is rotating so we know gear a from the statement is rotating at 500 drivers per minute right Let's see what else we have we said find the speed of the output shaft All right so we're looking for the speed of the output shaft output shaft is connected to analyst gear d so we're looking for the rotational frequency of gear d once we get that then we'll have the rotational frequency of the output shaft right and the analyst e is fixed so analyst e so gear e is fixed so that's equal to zero we are looking for the rotational frequency of gear d right so this is what we're looking for. Right. So they said nothing about the arm L, so we leave that open. Gear E, they said it's fixed, so this will be equal to zero. They said nothing about gear B or C. Right. Then gear A, they said it's rotating at 500 revs minutes so this will be positive 500 we are looking for gear d so we are looking for nd right that's what you're looking for All right so in order to get gear d we need the values of x and y right so remember once you have your third condition to get our our equations we then equate condition two with three right so under second and third conditions right we'll be using information on gear e and information on gear a and of course information on gear d right so for gear e we know that x plus y is equal to zero take that as your first condition right then under gear a we know that minus 2x plus y is equal to 500 take that as your second condition right now we need both x and y so let's first solve for x from, from the first e e equation right by transposing y so this will be minus y take this as a third condition i mean as a third equation right now we're going to substitute equation 3 into 2, right? So we have minus 2x, x which is equal to what? Minus y. So minus y plus y is equal to 500, right? Now, negative 2 times negative y is positive 2y. 2y plus y is 3y. So this will be 3y is equal to 500. Then we're looking for y, so we divide both sides by 3. Right, and the value of y, if you punch this in your calculators, you will get 
166,667, right? Therefore, to get x, we know x is equal to what? Minus y, right? So to get x, x is simply negative y, and y is 166,667, right? So we have both values of x and y, right? So now we can get nd. So now we can get nd, right? What is nd equal to? Right? nd is equal to what? 1, 1,143x plus y. Right? Now we have the values of x and y, so we can get nd, right? nd is equal to 1, 1,143x. x is equal to minus 166,667. Plus y, y is positive, so it remains positive. 166,667. So nd, if you punch this in your calculators, nd will be equal to what? Minus... 23,833, right? Which means ND is equal to 23,833 revs per minute. And because the answer we got was negative, it means it is going anti clockwise, right? So remember, they were looking for the rotational frequency of what? Of the output shaft and the output shaft since it's connected to what to the analyst gear d it means if you have the rotational frequency of gear d then you inadvertently have the rotational frequency of the output shaft right right see you guys on the next one